Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode 101, the beginning of the new era, the new the new thing. We passed 100, so <laughs> we're at 101, and I couldn't think of anybody better than the dorky diva herself, Savannah Odit, to, to usher in this new age, post-100 episodes of the Interesting Podcast. So this one with the dorky diva herself, guys. Savannah Odit is back. Last time she was Savannah Kiefer. A lot has happened. She's uh, become my BFF in the meantime. So uh, this was fun. It was fun. Savannah's great. We talked about uh, pretty much everything that's happened in the last three years since she was last on the show. Uh, we talked about how she moved from Florida to California. We talked about working for Hot Topic. Uh, she told a story about how she stepped on a sea urchin. That's uh, fun isn't the right word, but pretty interesting. Uh, if you've ever wondered what that felt like... <laughs> We talk about uh, how she got started in social media, working for Ashley Eckstein, um, how uh, working with brands is behind the scenes, starting her own company with Odit Creative Solutions, uh, which is amazing. Definitely check them out. Uh, she built my website, so that's pretty cool. She talked about blogging and how pretty much everything has come from blogging, how she started that growing up and what that's turned into and just building all of that from the ground up. It's exciting. It's really cool. Uh, if you listen to this, you probably know who Savannah is, so you know she's already great. So let's just get right into it. Here is the interesting podcast, episode number 101 with Savannah Odit. Theme song time. The good news is, you're back on the show. I know. I'm so excited. You did it. It only took how many times of begging you and it took a lot pleading my case to be back on the show. I mean, I said you could come back. Was... I know, but I didn't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fair. That's fair. It did take a long time, but uh -huh. all's well that ends well. Yeah, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. I have no idea how this is going to go because I know you too well. And these shows are me learning about a person. <laughs> well. Yep. Let's do this. <laughs> let's do this. You're back. 101. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, it's here's the thing. You have to think in terms of go back to Brian in, what was it, 2016 when we first talked on the show and I pretend like no you don't idea. know anything about my life since then. Yeah. I mean... Was it 2016? I have no idea. I don't keep track of any of this. Stuff. I think it was because I was still living in Florida. Were you? Yeah, because wow. I, I was in college and then I moved in 2017. Good lord! And also graduated. So, wow, you yeah. have been through a lot since the a last lot time I talked changed. to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how have you, how have you been, buddy? I've been so good. <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah, it's been two years. Two years ago. No, three years. It says two. Wait, hold on. You know what? No, it's been three years, Brian. Hold on. If 2016 was three years ago. Oh, yeah. 2017 was two years ago. That's how math works. Not really. I never said I was good at numbers. <laughs> you found my weakness. <laughs> I will break you. Yeah. it's. I mean, if you find the right spot, it's really not that hard. It's just, fi <laughs> <laughs> it's just finding the finding the weakness. Oh, geez. <laughs> There's a kill switch on me. Just nobody's found it yet, which is pretty good for me, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, 101. We did it. Mm -hmm. We passed 100. We did it. That's a big deal. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about it. Uh, I said um, to celebrate your 100 episodes, I'm going to bake 100 cupcakes and eat them all by myself. And did you? Not yet. Okay, good. Yet. <laughs> As long as it's coming. Yeah. It, this is a test to our friendship. I think if I baked mini cupcakes, I could definitely do it. Do I think, could do. do I could eat a hundred mini cupcakes in a day. I could eat them in a day. How many do you? You think? don't know me, Brian. You've never seen me like <laughs> chow down. I've actually You've only never seen me at seen conventions you. when I don't eat for <laughs> like eleven hours. That's true. I've actually never seen you in person. It's all a ruse. Yes. Um, how yes. many cupcakes do you think you could eat in one sitting? 
So I've actually done something before. Oh my God, this is <laughs> so, great. One of my best friends and I, oh God, I love her to death. So we went to college together, like we met in college and on Friday nights, she would work in the photo lab on campus and she lived off campus, but she had to work in the photo lab until like midnight. Okay. And because it was so late and she's not really super crazy about driving at night, she would come over, like I would go get her on campus and like take her back to my dorm and we'd have like basically like a sleepover. Like she had like a little sleeping bag on the floor. And anyways, Friday nights were like fun sleepover nights and we'd watch movies and stuff. Okay. Um, and then she'd go home the next morning. So one day, so usually after I picked her up, we would go get something to eat because she had been in the lab for like hours without food. Sure. Um, you're not allowed to have food in the lab. So anyways, That's fair. one time we decided to go get cupcakes and we got like 48 mini cupcakes and oh my God. we have a video of it too. It's so funny because we were like. Let's see how many of these we can eat. And when we were at the store, I was like, Julia, don't get that pack of cupcakes. Like, they're just going to go to waste. And she goes, uh, no, they're not. And I was like, all right. Dude, says, you we, underestimate went, my power. we went ham on that pack of cupcakes. <laughs> and we each ate, like, 24 cupcakes. You finished and, the bag. Yeah, Respect. it was intense. Um, how long and did we did that you? in, like, 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. What kind of cupcakes were they? They they were um, some that were chocolate, some that were vanilla, and oh they had like a little Halloween icing on them and sprinkles, and you know they're just like grocery store cupcakes. Yeah, but... But still, good lord, variety. Yeah, pack. that was one of my fondest memories. We always did the weirdest, funniest things, and we would usually go to McDonald's and get like a McChicken and a cheeseburger, and then we go back to my dorm and watch movies. That but we'd be so like slap happy because it'd be so late that we'd just like laugh at everything. Yeah. <laughs> So when we were eating those 24 cupcakes, we were just, like, cracking up the whole time. But yeah, anyways, it was a good time. So I've I've done go. 24 cupcakes in 15 minutes. So if I could do okay. that, 100 is literally nothing. You Marty, know, I've, by the way there. I've heard that it's a time thing, you know, as far as, like, getting full. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter the amount of food. It's how quickly you consume it because your yeah. body doesn't know you're full until, like, X amount of time. Yeah. So if you can just shovel it in. I think competitive eaters, um, like the people that do the Nathan's hot dog challenge, they yes. eat in advance. They eat a lot of lettuce to stretch out their stomach. What? So if I really prepped for this, I could I could really do it by stretching out my stomach. Okay. Respect. We have to do this now. It's official. Yeah. 40, Actually. 48 and 15 minutes by two people. 24 yeah. is a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. I mean, they were mini cupcakes, but still, they're like, like you know. Okay, like how many? Like mini muffins? I mean, it took me two bites to do one mini cupcake. Okay, that's respectable. It's not like yeah. one bite, like in mini right. muffins and the little brownie things. You just... Right. Not that. Right. No. A little bigger than that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, Katie, that you had on your show a few episodes ago, or maybe in a few episodes. I yep. can't remember. <laughs> she will be um... out in two days. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So she and I are going to Disney together at the end of this month, and we Amazing. talked about eating lettuce in preparation for this trip so that we can eat as much food in Disney as possible. That's a good plan. That's a good plan. <laughs> That's the kind of friends we are. <laughs> lettuce stretches out your stomach? I didn't know that. I mean, if you eat a lot of it. That's what I've heard. That's I mean, what if you I'll eat a lot of little... anything, I feel like it would stretch out your stomach. Yeah, but it also probably doesn't feel super heavy when you do it, so maybe that's the uh, best option, you know? Good point. Good so... Point. Yeah, I don't know, but I, I I've just heard that with the Nathan hot dog eaters, they go huh. crazy on some lettuce. What's yep. the most amount of food you've eaten at once? Um. Does anything stick out? Honestly, I can't, I can't really think of anything in particular. Yeah. Um. I know. I don't know, but people are always shocked when they are eating with me because yeah. I'm so short and I think <laughs> they just short. assume like I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if people assume just because I'm like smaller that I don't eat a lot, but dude, I can go crazy on some food. Like I can eat an entire pizza by myself. There you go. Respect. I don't, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way, except now I'm actually starting to show. That Same. I'm, that I'm, that I'm a little <laughs> That's pudgier. why I can't. Yeah, it's like we've talked I about. It's I can't. something about marriage. Your body composition changes, and it's like, how about this food just sticks around for a while now? It's literally the worst, yeah. and it's not even adulthood. It's marriage. It is. Because, I mean, it's 
literally the worst. It's and weird. even my husband is like, you're the reason why I'm fat. And I'm just like, uh, okay, really? But then I'm like, <laughs> okay, really? You're <laughs> because <right. laughs> we both gained weight since we got married. And before that, I never, ever, ever had issues with my weight, yep. ever. I was the same. I could eat whatever and be fine and, like, wasn't worried about it. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. And I'm not even eating that much. And I'm like, somehow, I'm still gaining weight. Yeah. <laughs> I have the fun thing where I'm not – I gained a bunch of weight, and then I plateaued, which is nice. But mm -hmm. I'm not gaining any more weight, but the weight is shifting around, so I'm looking bigger. And I'm oh, like, what no. is going on? It's like, the no. scale's the same. That's, like, yeah. the next stage for me. I don't yeah. want to go through that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the most food i ever ate i was on a cruise i think it was it might have been for my birthday either my birthday or our honeymoon or something we were on a cruise because we like cruises and mm -hmm. i found out have you ever been on a cruise yeah i'll tell you a story about that when we get done with this <laughs> conversation <laughs> <laughs> off air <laughs> no, 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 no. I can tell it oh. on air, but it's a story. They so yes, they... I've been on one cruise before. Okay, I've been on a lot of cruises, like seven or something. And oh. so you have the option to eat at like a fancy restaurant every night, right? You like have an allotted time slot for supper, and then you go there for that. Well, you get to pick, you know, an appetizer, your your meal, and then your dessert. Well, I found out on this particular cruise with Monique on day, I don't know, two maybe on a week long cruise. I found out you can order two dinners if you want, and they're not going to stop you. What? I know. Because they have, like, a section where it's different every night, and then below that, a section where it's the same every night. So if you don't like any of the new stuff, you can mm -hmm. fall back on one of these other ones. I love steak. Like, a lot. It's my favorite food. And so, steak mm -hmm. is one of the classic ones that's there every night. So when I found out you can order two dinners... I ordered a steak every night, and then I also ordered one of the new things. Oh, my. I know. It was amazing. And this was before, you know, we got married, so I was uh, 20 pounds lighter. But uh, I, would, yeah. I would have the appetizer, and then if Monique didn't finish hers, I would eat hers. And then I ate two dinners, and then I would have a dessert. And I Oh, my god! I know. I remember one night, the table next to us, after I got done, I'd eat, and I'm like, all right, cool. And this guy next to me just goes, where is that going? I was like... I don't know, man. I don't know. Well, I walked away like a champ. It was awesome. That sounds like um, my mom's friend, Michael. I think you met him at Celebration. He's like um, he's like the smallest little man I've ever seen. <laughs> and he works out for like three hours a day. But he's not like beefy or bulky. He's just like very thin. Yeah. But he works out for three hours a day so that he can eat literally the most amount of food that I've ever seen in my life. Respect. And when I went to Celebration Chicago, um, my mom picked me up and like Michael was driving and a few other friends were with us. And then we all went out to breakfast and we went to this place that made these ginormous omelets, like the biggest omelets I've ever seen. And I eat like two bites mm -hmm. <laughs> and everybody eats just like, you know, a normal sized portion of their omelet. And then Michael's like, OK, I'll take everybody's leftovers. And he eats them all. And that's him at like every meal. Like he eats. 10 normal size meals at one meal. Oh. And he and he's like the thinnest person I've ever seen in my life. That's the and way I'm to go. Like, but where do you put all the food? That's I don't and how do you not feel absolutely disgusting after that? Like if I eat a <laughs> lot now, I just feel like I want to die. Yeah. I I I like I like eating. That's the thing though. You can uh, you know what really discouraged me is every time you're like I think I'm going to go to the gym. Most people that I've talked to that go to the gym regularly are all like mini scientists mm -hmm. you know they're like listen you're gonna need to get this and then these are that and this is the carb and then you're gonna want this too i was like i don't understand a word too you're much saying work. just tell me yeah. what to pick up a couple times yeah uh, <laughs> and in what order <laughs> and in what order exactly like how do you boil this down for a dum dumb such as myself <laughs> um but that's the thing the ideal spot i think is when you you can't they say you can't outwork a bad you can't work out a bad diet or something like that right mm -hmm. and then i was like well I am not not going to eat this entire cake by myself. So we need mm -hmm. to meet in the middle somewhere. But that's that's the sweet spot there. If you can work out so much to where you can eat whatever you want because it evens out. You know? I feel like his metabolism must be really great though. I, I don't well, I don't know because I think he was pretty overweight before. So I'm not sure. Yeah, 
that's something. how he manages that. It's interesting to watch, though. But can I tell you my cruise story? You can definitely tell me your cruise story. I'm pretty sure I've told you this before. Maybe you just don't remember. So um, <laughs> when I was like, yeah, it'll sound brand new to you because you will. forget everything. I do. Uh, when I was like eight years old, my mom's side of the family all went on a cruise and it was like my aunts and uncles and their kids, like my cousins and, and everybody went on this cruise. And I think, so we went to the Bahamas. I can't remember how many days it was, but it feels like it was, I don't know, four days. I don't know. Sure. I, that was a long time ago, but we, you know, we were in the Bahamas. Four days. Four days. So we are on the cruise. We get to the Bahamas. We get off the boat. We get on the island. I jump in the water. So excited to go swimming in the Bahamas. And I'm like pushing my cousin around on this little floaty because she's younger than me. And I was like, oh, you know, she's like, she can't really swim that well. So I was just kind of like pushing her around on this floaty. Okay. And my dad is talking to my aunt in the water, like just, you know, maybe 10, 15 feet from us. And I'm like, oh. Uh, something just like poked my foot and I was like, yes. I don't know what this is. I so this. I hop over on one foot in the water to <laughs> my dad and I just leave my cousin. I was like, gotta go. See you later. <laughs> she, she must've been like five or six at the time. Um, so that was probably not a good choice, but I was like, <laughs> something's wrong. So I went over to my dad and I pick up my foot out of the water and I show it to him and it looks like someone took a blue a ballpoint pen and dotted the bottom of my foot, like the pad of my foot. Oh. And so he, like, picks me up out of the water and carries me over to the lifeguard. And the lifeguard's like, oh, you stepped on a sea urchin. And I was like, what? Uh. <laughs> so then they had to, like, rush me onto the bow. And I had to have immediate surgery on my foot. And I just remember they put shots in my foot so it would be numb. And I just remember still being able to feel what they were doing. It didn't hurt, but I could feel it. What? And my dad was super angry because the doctor was, like, totally hacking up my foot. Good Lord. And then the rest of the cruise, obviously, I couldn't walk on that foot because it was all hacked up <laughs> and it was like wrapped up oh. in gauze and stuff. And every day my mom had to change the gauze out and it was so painful and I didn't even get to go swimming again. And it was the worst. So, <laughs> uh. so that was my cruise experience. I mean, um, is I haven't it been fair? on a cruise since then, but I, if I did go on another cruise, I would just wear water shoes like yeah. everywhere. That's a good I idea. highly recommend wearing water shoes. Is your foot, is your foot like all scarred up? Uh, it was for a while, but not anymore. It oh, must've like, that would have been cool. Stuff. I had, you could clearly see like for a few years where each little spike was in my foot. Ooh. It was almost like there was a weird callus on the bottom of my foot. Like the, the, you know, like my footprint was gone in those spots it was just like super smooth skin it was really weird but um yeah it's not it's not there anymore if i looked really hard i could probably see it but it's not as obvious oh is it so, so fun time. pain level 10 being excruciating 1b and you don't even feel it where's a sea urchin prick land i mean probably like a six it wasn't super painful okay. it was just like it, it was like a poke uh -huh. and it was very alarming i've been in much worse pain before Okay. Um, I think the worst part was honestly after it was all over having to change out like all the gauze and stuff every day like that was super painful yeah I hear um, you but the like when it actually happened it was not terrible it was just like extremely uncomfortable the funny thing is we went to um, Hawaii like just several years after that and I remember my dad and I went snorkeling in Hanama Bay and the tide was like rising and lowering a lot as we were swimming mm -hmm. at, like as the waves came in and I remember swimming over this coral reef oh boy. that had giant pockets in it and each pocket was a giant sea urchin oh. and I was swimming over it and the water lowered while I was swimming over it and my stomach literally touched oh. the top of that coral reef and I started having a panic attack in the water like through my snorkel mask I was I like <laughs> <laughs> and I totally freaked out and then finally the water rose back up and I was able to move but it scared me so bad because I was just like oh my gosh here it's we go again <laughs> here we go again. oh my god what is Hawaii yeah. like 
I've always <sighs> wanted to go. It's the most I've beautiful never place been. in the whole world, and I think about it all the time, and I want to go back so bad. The one time I went there was like the coolest trip I've ever been on because my uncle was stationed in Oahu. Nice. And um, my dad and my brother and I, um, we stayed at my uncle's house, and it just had like the most beautiful view. And my uncle doesn't have kids, and he rarely had visitors and stuff, so he was very excited for us to come see him. And he was really kind enough to fly us to several other islands when we were there so we were there for a week and we obviously stayed on Oahu but we went to the big island for a couple days and we went to Maui for a couple days and we did like the coolest stuff ever we went whale watching and saw these massive whales jumping out of the water in Maui and when we went to the big island we hiked Mauna Kea and we went to the top of that mountain it's like 14,000 feet and we it was just like the coolest trip ever because it was so adventurous and like my mom is the kind of person and I don't blame her at all but when she's on vacation she would be like the person sitting on the beach reading a book and because she sent us on this trip by ourselves we just did so many crazy things like we went hiking (laughs) every day we went snorkeling every day we were just like going all over the place doing super cool things and we didn't do any of the touristy stuff like uh, we didn't go to a luau. We didn't go to a dull plantation. But it was nice because all the places that we went were really only places that locals would know about because my the uncle was go. living there. Yeah. So it was just magical. It was so beautiful. And the people were so nice. And <sighs> I think everybody should go to Hawaii. And I, for the longest time, I thought it would be so cool to live there. Sure. And then um, my first college roommate, she just – was there two years ago. She was there for an entire summer doing an internship. And it was always her dream to move there. And she lived there for several months. And she goes, love this place. So happy I did this. Would definitely never move here. And she's just like, wow. you feel trapped. She said yep. that you just feel like you can't go anywhere. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So kind of interesting. But yeah, it's beautiful. Makes sense. Makes sense. I mean, it is an island in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, she she really loved her time, but she said that you can just like I can't remember how much time it takes to drive across the island, but it's not very uh-huh. long. Yeah, <laughs> and then you're like, okay, <laughs> these are my boundaries. <laughs> That's right. This is the end already. All yeah. right. And I guess because it's so expensive to live there that sure. usually like three generations of people live together in one house, which is a lot of people, you know. Yeah. And she was staying with a family that had like three generations of people in their house. And she was just like, that's a lot. You just feel like you have no personal space. And, you know, I can see why it would be tough to deal with that. Obviously, if you're not a millionaire, you're not going to be able to really like have your own space there just because it's so heavily populated. Sure, sure. I'm going to go one day. I'm really excited. Yeah, you should. It's so. It's right up so my alley. Great. So expensive, though. Yeah, for real. I remember. One morning when we were there, we went and got breakfast at Denny's, Mm -hmm. and I really wanted chocolate milk, and Uh (laughs) like we rarely ate out when we were kids and stuff, so it was like, oh, getting chocolate milk at a restaurant was like really exciting. Mm -hmm. I ordered chocolate milk, and it was so good that I ordered another chocolate milk, and then I realized (laughs) that there were not free refills, and each chocolate milk was $4. Ooh. I thought my dad was going to kill me. (laughs) Goodness. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he spent eight bucks on chocolate milk. Sorry, Dad. Okay. I mean, that's love, though, isn't it? Yeah. I that's... mean, he was really mad at me, but, <laughs> but I didn't know anything. You're like, I had to stay behind for three days in dishes and work it off, yeah. but it's yeah. okay. <laughs> also confirmed, it was three years ago. You're right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I can do math. I mean, hey, we're not keeping score here. It was <laughs> November 3rd was the day wow. your episode came out, 2016. Wow. So not far from three years to the date, really. Not that not far. Not far from three years to the date, yeah. Wow. Three years. Pretty good. That's crazy. Yeah. It's been three years since we've been best friends. Yeah. You're, and you're back. <laughs> and I'm back. <laughs> and you're back. So let's see. That episode is where I always say that I kind of got the groove for this show. Mm-hmm. Like I always tell it when they're like, oh, should I go back to episode one? I was like, please don't. Like, all of the guests prior to you are great, amazing people, all friends of mine, but I wasn't confident in my abilities to do this show. 
and like mm-hmm. fall into my style and figure out what I wanted and how I wanted to do it. Your episode changed everything. Uh, not only because we became best friends from it, but you have terrible, terrible taste in co-hosts. <laughs> and <laughs> right after this, uh, for those that don't listen to the Dorky Diva show, but do listen to this, uh, which is going to be zero, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, you, you brought me on as a co-host of your show. Um, what were you thinking? <laughs> well, I eased you into it. I was yeah. like, I was like, you know, you couldn't co-host every other episode. You did. And then I was just like, well, just come on every episode because yeah. I'm tired of having guests on the other episodes. That happened like what, a week? Because what the thing was, I was the third episode. I remember because I remember going to your show and being like, all right, episode one, Ashley Eckstein. Whoa. And then Amy Radcliffe, all right, what am I doing here? <laughs> and I was number three. Uh, and then you were like, okay, cool, thanks for coming on, blah, blah, blah. And then you were looking for other guests in this thing. And then, yeah, I distinctly remember you being like, um, getting guests every week or every other week is difficult. How about you just come on full time? I was like, yeah. yeah. It, you're just like so flexible and so much fun <laughs> to talk to. And yeah, I was just like, it. I'm tired of talking to people that are boring. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Your standards it's been so, so fun low. though because i would still definitely not be doing that podcast if you were not on it i'd be like this is the most boring thing ever i'm I mean, gonna quit stop it you would have been fine no you know that's not true because <laughs> you dragged me through all of it that is true uh, out of the tr- out of the three years there was a year in the middle there where you were like i think i'm done with this <laughs> <laughs> and it was like those were the dark times it was like shortly after i came on too that was the best part it well, was like, all right, cool, you're a co-host. A lot, you you know? were. You were. T- granted, <laughs> I just think it was really funny. You're like, all right, come on as a full time. I was like, okay, cool. And then two weeks later, you're like, I think I'm, I think I'm going to wrap Screw this up. This. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, there's that balance <laughs> luck rubbing in. <laughs> That's literally hilarious. But hey, it didn't happen. And you didn't let it happen. So. That is true. It's more I didn't let it happen. I mean, there were, there were many months where we did not podcast. That's true. But, you know, we've got our groove back on. And yeah, we got our groove. And I'm stoked about it. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's not bad. A lot has happened since then. Mm Because you said you were in Florida before. Mm -hmm. And then you moved to California. Mm -hmm. That was an experience. It sure was. (laughs) (laughs) And legally, that's all we're allowed to say. And then... No. (laughs) No, I moved to... um, Okay, so let's go back in time. Let's Three years ago. Time. November 3rd, is that what you said? November 3rd? November 3rd, 2016, 2016. is the date so, your episode went live. I remember when we recorded that episode, I was still in school, mm-hmm. and I was almost done with my last semester to finish up classes, and then my actual final, final semester, I, all I had to do was an internship. Right. So I was like, going to the finish line there and then uh finish those classes in december and then in january i started interning with a marketing agency in jacksonville florida Mm. i miss jacksonville so much (laughs) um you're the one god everybody (laughs) talks so badly about jacksonville and i just thought it was so precious like i just loved living there so much it was that helps I would move back there in a heartbeat. Like literally if somebody said, where would you move right now? I would say Jacksonville for sure. Okay. Yeah. Standards are a little interesting. Have you ever been there? No. See, that's the thing. Everybody talks so poorly about it. It, If you picked anywhere in Florida, I would have been like, okay, really? Really? No. See, Florida is the only place I'd move to. Oh man. I miss it so much. (laughs) Don't ever, don't ever leave Florida. If you do, you're an idiot. (laughs) Ryan, I'll let you uh, pay my rent that I paid in okay, California, off, and you'll be like, I love Florida. I didn't Florida. say I wanted to pay the rent in a place. <laughs> I'm just well, that's saying. that's part of living there. I mean, yes, if you want to get realistic about it. It's insane. Let's just say that. Yeah. Um. So anyways, so I interned in Jacksonville for the spring semester, got the hours that I needed for the internship. And while I was working there, I was doing like so many different things. Um, I was doing copywriting and working on Google AdWords. And then I got involved with their video production team. Yep. 
and I'd never done video production before, but they were super fun to work with. And they actually did a lot of projects for the Tim Tebow Foundation. So it was just like a lot of really cool projects that impacted people's lives. And uh, it was just super fun. So anyways, while I was doing that internship, her universe posted a job posting that they were looking for an entry level video producer. And I was like, interesting i need this job (laughs) and i texted ashley and i was like i i'm really seriously interested in this and she said well do you have any experience in video and i said i'm i'm doing it right now i'm doing it hands-on and i'm doing a lot like i was editing videos i was shooting videos and working with a pretty big production team Mm -hmm. and on pretty large projects too so I felt confident and she was like, okay, we'll go ahead and apply and, and, you know, let's just see how it goes. And she was like, I don't have the final say in who gets hired, so I can't help you, but, you know, just apply. And I was like, okay. So I applied and I interviewed for three months, three and a half months, which was like the longest wow. period of my life. Um, the marketing agency ended up hiring me full time for like a week and I was very open with them. I told my boss, I was like, I'm, I'm interviewing for this job in California and I really want this job. And she was like, go for it. Like, you know, we're happy to have you as long as you're here, but like, if that's what you want, then go for it. And that was really nice of her. Sure. Um, so I did a ton of interviews. I had to do like a trial project to send them during the interview process. I got the job And then the first week of April, I flew out to California for my orientation at work to sign all the paperwork and to find a place to live. (laughs) And I had two days. Oh, (laughs) boy. And that was the most stressful thing I've ever done in my life. Like, it was so emotionally tolling because, you know... I knew what I would be making. I knew how expensive it was to live there. I knew I didn't want a roommate because, first of all, I didn't know anybody out there to room with. And I didn't want a stranger living with me. Fair. I don't like having roommates. I've been through it before, and I've never had a good experience. So, I remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't ever have a roommate. <laughs> it's the worst. Yep. Um, so, anyways, it was it was interesting. My mom went with me and we had like a list of apartments that we had looked at online that were within my budget and within a reasonable distance to work. And then we got there, we looked at all of them. None of the places had availability. And if they did have availability, it was like the grossest, most unsafe apartment Ugh. ever. Like I saw so many apartments where I was like, I'm re- really scared right now. Like definitely not safe uh, areas. Sure. Uh, but obviously it's hard to tell that online when you're looking at places. So that is true. Yeah. We drove around for like two days and it was extremely frustrating. And it was to the point where I just was like going to pull over my car and cry. <laughs> and, uh, we ended up driving by this one apartment complex. I think it was called Madison park apartments and it was not on my list, but I was like, well, this place looks really nice. You know, let's just like see what this is all about. And I, and we both looked at each other and said, it's probably going to be out of my budget, but we'll just look like we're desperate at this point. Sure. So we went in and we looked at an apartment and it was exactly what I needed. And thankfully it fell within my budget and I signed the papers that day. Um, and then the next day we went to Ikea and I remember my mom and I were so exhausted. We swear that Ikea was pumping in like hallucination drugs into their (laughs) store because we we could not focus and we had the worst headaches and we were like oh my gosh this is the worst experience ever in this ikea and i bought like a couch and a bookshelf and just some other things that i needed and thankfully the um the studio apartment that i had had a murphy bed so i didn't have to buy like a bed frame and all that stuff anyway so we did We did our furniture shopping and then Ikea delivered it. We put everything together. I went back to Florida and worked Celebration with Ashley, Celebration Orlando. And then the week after that, I packed up my car with anything that I could fit in it, which was not a lot, (laughs) and drove. My mom and I drove to California. I moved in. She stayed with me for a week while I was settling in. I started work and then she flew back and it was like, oh my God, okay, I'm alone now. This This is is scary. Yeah. (laughs) So it was a, it was a lot in a very short amount of time. Yeah. 
But, Man. And something yeah. that, like, you had, in the grand scheme of things, recently started doing. Yeah. Oh, production. so ridiculous. I had no clue what I was doing, but I just pretended like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> That's the key. Fake it till you make it. Yeah. I was teaching I myself stuff while I was interviewing because... I knew it was like a pretty entry level position and I was like, I don't need to be, first of all, I don't need to be overqualified for this and I'm definitely not. Um, and then the stuff that I needed to know, I could easily teach myself. Sure. And the people that I was interning with, they were so, 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 so gracious and taught me so much to prepare me for that job, uh, for free. Like they, it was just so awesome of them and they could see like how passionate I was about it and how badly I wanted this job. And they all understood, like they were all Star Wars fans, which was really cool in the office. Yeah. And so they understood like what this meant to me and I told them about her universe and they were like, wow, that's so cool. Um, and they were just extremely helpful. So I'm really, really, really grateful to them. And it was, it was neat. Like when I, when I flew out for my orientation, I was at the hotel in California and my boss from the agency in Florida, she called me and she was like, hi, she left me a message and she said, hi, um, I miss you and I hope everything's going well. (laughs) And I just want to make sure you were doing okay. And it was this, it was like the sweetest thing ever. So that was really nice. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. So what sort of video work were you doing? So her universe is owned by Hot Topic and Hot Topic also owns Box Lunch, which is, I feel like way more well known now than when it, like than when I started working there. Definitely. Um, so I shot videos for all three of those brands and a lot of it was fashion campaigns. So if her universe came out with a new Star Wars fashion line, we would take videos of the models while they were shooting the pictures for the website and compile it into a video and release it to announce the collection. And because I was working at Hot Topic, um, they had a lot of musicians and bands come in and they would play music um, in our studio and we would film them and put it on the Hot Topic YouTube channel. Nice. So we did so many things. Um, We had our own studio in the office, which is where I worked. And, you know, my day to day was like working in the studio and sitting at my desk and editing videos. But we also got to shoot on location a lot. So um, we shot across from the Disney campus in Burbank, which was super cool at this old airport that is no longer an airport it's like a museum now i think sure um and that was super cool we did like a marvel campaign there and i got to go with ashley the very first day i worked there she was on chris hardwick's show at midnight Nice. and she was on the show and i went with her um and that was really cool um we did so many things. It's like hard to remember everything we did. Yeah. Uh, but my favorite part was when Ashley was at conventions, if she was doing like a signing or some sort of special appearance, I would go and uh, video her and I was in charge of her social media. So uh. most of her social posts during that time were written and posted by me and we had a really great time working together and it was always so fun to like go places with her. I remember one day we were filming some footage for a video that was going to play before the her universe fashion show at Mm comic-con and we got to go to Disneyland for a half a day and just take video of her on the rides and like eating churros and it was just her and I, and it was super fun. Um, and yeah, so it was cool. It was really cool. Um, Obviously, I liked working on the Her Universe projects more than, like, anything else. Sure. Uh, We did this fun YouTube show called Tea Party Tuesdays, where every Tuesday a new episode would come out with Ashley in her, like, Alice in Wonderland-themed office talking to some some sort of guest. And she talked to everybody from, like, uh, models to musicians to super fans to cosplayers to lawyers like anybody and everybody kind of like your show i mean she would just talk to like anybody that was around and it was really cool to get to know people um and i got to shoot and edit their interviews so that was really fun that was always go but yeah i worked on stuff for all three of the brands which was really neat and yeah 
Not That's bad. what I did. The, the one of the coolest days was uh, for box lunch. They did a Nickelodeon collection. Ooh. It was like very '90s inspired, and we shot at the Paramount Studios back lot. So we had the entire what? back lot to ourselves, and like I drove my car on the back lot. I have a picture of my car in oh front of the buildings gosh. on the back lot, and. I, I was definitely more of an assistant figure that day. I wasn't actively shooting a ton of stuff, Mm -hmm. but it was just so amazing to be there all day. And there were dogs in that shoot, which was even better. Um, And we had a golf cart for our team so that we could run around places and get equipment or whatever we needed to do. And I had to go drive the golf cart from one end of the studio lot to the other end for something. I can't remember what I was doing, but I drove by a building that was named after Gloria Swanson, who is the actress that plays Norba Desmond in Sunset Boulevard, which is my favorite movie. movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and several parts of that movie were filmed there at the Paramount studios and there's a gate. It's, it's, it used to be the main gate to the studio. Now it's just like a facade, you know, like they don't really use it. Right. Um, but I got to see that gate that was in the movie and that was like a really big deal for me. So that was definitely the coolest day I think that I had working there just because it, we just felt so legit. I was like, oh my gosh, we're like on a movie set basically. On a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah, and not many people get to do that, like, to get to drive your car on it. I mean, and we, we when we were filming, there were tours walking around and stuff, too, and they could watch us while we worked, and I got to go inside each of the fake buildings, and I was like, oh, this is just scaffolding, like. Oh, yeah, it's, it's all fake. They're just yeah, walls. And, <laughs> and we had a we had a set dresser there that day, and he was, like, changing out uh lights and lamp posts and doorknobs on the fake doors and i just remember that was really fun watching him um you know basically dress our set and it was just really neat that was a pretty big shoot that we did and it felt like we were making a movie <laughs> sure yeah it was really cool man what was the hardest part to pick up Because it's a job that you hadn't done prior and you were learning as you were going. For me, the hardest thing was honestly just dealing with my size. So it sounds so stupid, but all the guys that I worked with are over like six feet tall. And I'm over here 5'2". And we would have three cameras all set up in a row and we're each manning like, you know, a different camera. But I'd have to be on the same eye line as them. So I had to (laughs) carry a box around with me a lot. Like the case that my camera was in, I had to stand on it pretty much every shoot that we did. Um, And if we were doing an interview with someone that was really tall, I had to like hold the camera above my head basically. So honestly, dealing with that was the hardest part. Learning how to film and edit for me wasn't that difficult because once I had the basics down, everything else was really simple to pick up. And like I didn't find that part very difficult. It was just the um, dealing with like my size and it was it was always so embarrassing because uh the models that would come in and model for the collections they're super tall as well right and when filming i'd have to like you know uh get a detail shot of like a cool beanie that they're wearing or a detail on the shoulder of the outfit or something and i'd always 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 have to carry my stupid box up in front of them (laughs) in front of these gorgeous people you know And stand on my stupid box and film them and then move my box away so they could continue shooting photos. And that was, like, really humiliating, honestly. No. (laughs) uh, It was just frustrating because I always had to make sure I had something to stand on. And it just took more time for me to, like, set up my shot. Sure. I can see how that would get annoying. Than anybody else I could just walk up. Yeah. So that was kind of a bummer um the other thing that was a little bit difficult was if we were interviewing multiple people and they each had their own microphone trying to figure out whose mic was on who and just like in the editing process you know just getting all the sound levels right and if people are talking over each other how you have to um you know work on the levels and stuff and you know that was a little difficult to pick up at first sure but definitely my size was a problem. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, there's no way you can see that coming. Yeah. What did you edit on? Final Cut. Oh, boy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did that take you a while to pick up? It's fairly straight streamlined. Final Cut was easy to pick up, and I learned that when I was interning at the agency. Mm-hmm. Um, So that was fine. But, like, 
they started to transition to um, uh, the um, Adobe. What is it called? Premiere. Premier. Yep. Yeah. That's what I use. And I never ended up learning Premiere because uh, the other two guys that I worked with, they were learning Premiere. And then once they learned it, then I, it was going to be my turn. And I just didn't get the chance. So I always cut on Final Cut. I was really fast on Final Cut, too. Nice. Um, so that was nice. But it's really great that I that I learned how to use Final Cut because I use it on a weekly basis now for my own work. So I'm really glad that I, I learned how to use it. So Sure. It's really useful to know. I mean, it's yeah. pretty, pretty standard. A lot of people use Final Cut. Mm-hmm. It's using like Final it. Cut or Premiere. Yep. Not bad. Not bad at yep. all. But you're not in California anymore. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Like, sometimes I miss California. Sure. Just like when I watch the movie La La Land, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh, I miss boy. California, you know, because that movie's <laughs> just so beautiful and fun and yep. highlights all the best parts of living in LA. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't show you how gross LA is and how expensive LA is <laughs> and how, I mean, it obviously shows the traffic, but people aren't dancing on top of their cars That's when you're in traffic. That's true. Um, and if you try and, to get honked at. Yeah. Yep. Been there. And yeah, I, I, I'm glad that I lived there and I'm, I'm glad I got it out of my system. I always thought that I would live there for like my entire life. Sure. Um, but when you're actually there and you realize how tough it is, like I, I yeah. wasn't used to people being so cold because uh, being from the South, everybody's so friendly and nice. And no matter where you're at, like somebody will talk to if, if you're in the line of the grocery store, like you'll just chat it up with the people in front of you while you're waiting for your groceries to get scanned. But in, in L.A., everybody's so go, go, go and focus on themselves. And yeah, <laughs> it's just different, you know, and sure. that really threw me off guard. I, I had never experienced that before. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's it's about the same here in Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I miss that part about being in Florida. Um, and obviously, like I said, it was it was insanely expensive to live there. Sure. Um, I can't imagine how people who have kids and families and all that afford to live there. It's just, it's insane. Um, but there's a lot of really cool things about L.A. And it's really neat when you start to realize that everybody there knows everybody. Right. <laughs> like. A lot of people that I worked with knew people that wrote and directed movies and they knew actors and the models that we worked with actually for for fashion campaigns for Hot Topic and Her Universe. I see them on TV all the time now and I'm like, oh, I've actually worked with that person. You know, that's really weird for me because we worked with so many models and now a lot of those models are doing acting or they're they're modeling for like really big fashion campaigns. And I'll just be shopping online and I see them in an ad and I'm like, um. I know that person. That's Jessica, you know? <laughs> right, right. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, I, I think you have to be a very diligent person, very easygoing to live in Southern California. Yeah. Like, I'm a I'm a very structured person. And when true. I say, I want to get to this place by 10 a.m., you know, and then traffic is absolutely horrible and I get there at 10 15 like I'm in a bad mood because I don't like being late <laughs> and everybody's late all the time in LA right. and that's the worst thing ever for me. like if you're gonna if you say you're gonna be here at 10 I expect you to be here at 10 right. you know so that was tough for me things like that um it was also really hard to make friends just because everybody was so go 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 and a lot sure. of people there just want to go out at night and party and I'm just not that kind of person mm-hmm. so uh, I didn't really meet a lot of people my age when I lived out there, but my apartment was really cute. It was a tiny little <laughs> 300 square foot studio apartment and it was just so precious. And uh, it was the best part about living there was getting to hop in my car and be at Disneyland within 10 minutes. There like, you go. I miss that so much. <laughs> that's That's what I miss the most is like being so close to Disney and just getting to go there whenever I wanted and I would just go and do nothing. I would just go and sit on a bench and watch people for like an hour and then I go home. <laughs> there you go. It was so fun. Yeah. I've probably asked you this before, but Disneyland or Disney World? Disneyland. Yeah, I agree. I agree. There are a lot of things I do miss about Disney World just because obviously I grew up going to those parks, but Right. Disneyland is so quaint and so all in one. Perfect. Yeah. Like, and so 
exactly what you pictured Disney to be because it is what Walt built. Yeah. And a lot of things have changed since he was around. But when you walk down Main Street in Disneyland, it feels like the pictures that you've seen of Walt walking on Main Street in Disneyland. Whereas sure. when you walk down the street in Disney World, it's very large. It's very over the top. It's to me, it feels more like commercialized. It's just like so intense. I remember after living in California for like nine months, I went back to Florida and went to Disney World. And my first impression was, oh my God, the sidewalks here are so big because there's so many right. more people <laughs> going to those parks. And I couldn't believe like the sidewalks were massive. But in Disneyland, it, it feels like an actual sidewalk that you would walk on right. next to a regular street, you know? Sure. So everything is scaled a little bit smaller and a little more like intimate and Disneyland is just so cool. I love it so much. I agree. I like that. It's all there. Like you don't Mm -hmm. have to buy tickets to multiple parks. You know what I mean? It's like, if you want to go to Disney, but you also want to go to the star Wars world, you got to buy tickets for Hollywood studios and magic kingdom. Right. I was like, I like having it there. The nice thing is, I mean, you do have to like pay if you want to get into California adventure, but the great thing is if you want to, park hop it's a two minute walk between parks it's not even two minutes it's like yeah. 50 feet you know like it's it's nothing whereas when you are in florida you have to get on a bus or get on a monorail or drive and park and all that stuff but yep. it's so convenient when you go to california and also uh downtown disney is attached there too so literally everything is within walking distance which is why i prefer like if i need a disney fix and i need to go to disney like i'll just go to disneyland because once i get there it's so easy, so less stressful. I don't have to like rent a car or feel like I'm wasting time um, trying to get from place to place. Like everything's just right there, which is really nice. I agree. I like the convenience. Mm-hmm. It's just right there. Mm-hmm. It's so nice. Yeah. I feel like you can maximize your money there just because you're not wasting time on just getting from place to place. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So, you know me and time. That we don't really get along, so I don't know. While you were at Hot Topic, is mm-hmm. that when you went to ILM, or was that after? Yes, that was at the very end. So I went to ILM in February of 2018. Nice. Uh, in that trip, I got to give creds to Ashley because she pulled for me so hard to get to go on that trip. I should not have been on that trip. She <laughs> she was like, she she had a meeting in San Francisco with the people in charge of Studio Ghibli and she was going to take them to Lucasfilm and they had their meeting at Lucasfilm in one of the meeting rooms there and she like introduced them to everybody at Lucasfilm and she <laughs> she told the head of marketing that she needed me there to like post about it on social (laughs) beautiful um so it worked out i flew up one day i got there in the afternoon and i went to the palace of fine arts for a few hours just to kill time um and then we had a tour at lucasfilm and that was your first oh i forgot i forgot i yeah that was my first and only time i've been there i forgot i was also there for a studio ghibli pop-up shop that was that was the main Uh, reason yeah so i was going i was definitely going because i needed to work at the pop-up shop but ashley got me in on that tour because she was like oh we definitely need to post about this on social media and it was so awkward like i did the tour with them and that was (laughs) great but afterwards they had this giant business meeting and obviously i didn't need to be in the meeting so i sat outside of the meeting room and i can clearly see them through the window and i'm in this like little (laughs) waiting area of lucasfilm where people are coming in and out of and it's people i know who they are like some of them (laughs) didn't know who i was but some people did know who i was and they were like savannah why are you here and i'm just sitting in this (laughs) waiting room by myself and i'm like oh i'm just waiting for their their meeting to be over and it was so funny. funny but yeah it was a really cool it was a really cool day, and so I worked the pop-up shop for a couple of days, and it went great, and then I got to have lunch with Amanda Jean from Amazing. the Star Wars show and our friend AJ, and they took me to this um, dim sum place, and I'd never had dim sum what? before, so that was really neat. It was a really cool, like, random hole-in-the-wall place, nice. and it was a n- not a super far drive, but it took us probably, like, 25 minutes to get there. Um, so it was nice. I was able to see more of the San Francisco like area sure. and not just 
the Presidio and where I was like in downtown San Francisco for the pop-up shop. But yeah, that was a cool trip. That's pretty good. I would love to go back to San Francisco. That's pretty good. Dorky yeah. Diva needs to make a pilgrimage. Yeah, it, it'll definitely happen soon. The awesome thing is that now there's an airport not too far from my house, like a new airport, and they have direct flights to San Francisco for like 70 bucks. So, there you go. Can't yeah. go wrong with that. Yeah, so it's not expensive, which is awesome. So you were doing social media for Ashley. Did mm-hmm. Was social media something that you just kind of fell into as well? Because that is not the same thing as video production. Yeah. So when they hired me, they were like, oh, we need someone to help Ashley manage her social just while she's at events. Uh Uh, And then it very clearly became a full time thing. So I was basically doing two jobs and getting paid for one. (laughs) (laughs) um, That's that's, that's how it goes in it. And I was I was happy to do it because working with Ashley was why I wanted to work there and when I did video I really didn't work with her that much I worked on way more hot topic and way more box lunch projects than I ever worked on her universe projects which was Mm -hmm. very unfortunate because I went there to work for her universe Um, so when they started giving me more social projects I gladly took them because I was like all right well this is an opportunity for me to work more closely with Ashley on a brand that I am passionate about Right. I'm not passionate about Hot Topic, sorry, but I'm there. just not. <laughs> so, um, why you there? so one of the coolest things that I got to do for social was um, plan all the content. And I got to, I started this thing where I styled outfits using her universe pieces that were currently being sold. Um, and I worked with a super cool photographer. Her name is Vicky. Um, and she would help me shoot like these flat lay outfits that I would post on social. So I'd go into the sample closet, grab a few things, and then I'd go into the photo shoot closet. And that's where they just had generic clothing that they would put on models with branded pieces. Mm -hmm. So there was like shoes, pants, accessories, like anything you can imagine, hair, like hair accessories, jewelry, everything. Um, so I would pick like a her universe shirt and then I'd go into the other room and get like shoes to go with it and a skirt and like a cool hat. And I'd make a whole, a whole outfit around this, her universe piece. And then Vicky and I would shoot it together. And she's, she's so amazing. Like I had no idea how much work goes into shooting a flat lay outfit and how there is a level of artistry to it. Like getting clothes laying on the ground to look beautiful is so difficult and (laughs) oh my gosh she taught me so much and she would spend hours on one flat lay and it it was just like unbelievable because if you think about it like she taught me some stuff when you're wearing a piece of clothing you know there's obviously fabric on your sides and then when you lay that piece of clothing flat on the ground that material is sticking out of the sides and it looks funky because that's not how it would look on your body because it's wrapped around the sides of your body. So she had these amazing like little techniques where she would tuck in the sides and like tuck in the uh, the shoulder area. And it was intense. Like it was just so crazy how she would do things to make the clothing laying on the ground look more like it's going to look on your body more flattering and not just like a square. Sure. Um, so I loved working with her. That was one of the coolest things I got to do on social. And then like I said, when Ashley was at events and stuff, Um, I got to go with her most of the time and take photos of her at signings and take photos of her with fans and post them. And um, it was really neat being on like the behind the scenes of the Her Universe community uh, because I would see every single person that ever mentioned Her Universe or anybody that tagged Her Universe in their outfit they were wearing. I would see it and I had the opportunity to like respond to them and make them feel important. That's cool. It was so special because a lot of these people I knew because I had been in the Her Universe community since it started. Right. Um, And I would, once a week, I would pull like, you know, 10 to 15 pictures of girls in their Her Universe outfits that week and put them on social media and tag them and like give them a shout out. And I remember Ashley would do that when Her Universe just started and like sometimes she would tag me and it would just totally make my day. Um, sure. so it was really, really, really fun being able to do that. Um, so I, I did so many things while I worked there that it's hard for me to remember every little thing, but working with Ashley was absolutely amazing and getting to see her in her environment was sure. seeing amazing. her work. 
she is she is the hardest working person I've ever seen in my life. And like, <laughs> I have a, a very hardworking father and like, I've been around very hardworking people for the entirety of my life. And she is just, she doesn't stop. And she is always putting the fans first and always has an amazing attitude to everybody she comes in contact with. Even if she's having a horrible day, if somebody comes into her office with a question she offers them a bowl of candy. She asks them how's how's their day going. You know, like she is so kind to everybody. And she is just so great. Like I am so, so, so grateful that I got to work with her, you know, just for a year. It was a short amount of time, but I learned a lot from her. And actually knowing the amount of effort she puts in to make this brand even exist people would not be able to fathom it honestly she works so hard um and it it blew me away because I didn't realize how much work goes into running you know an apparel company like that sure especially of that size yeah and and getting to see her interact with executives at Disney and people at Marvel and and all of that was really neat too getting to observe like her professional relationships and how she talks to her peers and you know that taught me a lot um, even without her saying, hey, Savannah, pay attention. You know, like she never said, hey, this is a teaching moment. But because I was able to observe her so much, I did learn a lot. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Man. She's the best. Yeah. I love <laughs> Sometimes she would buy pizza for the entire office. There's like 400 people working there and she would buy pizza Ooh. for everybody. And our studio was in the distribution center, actually. It was like a soundproof studio in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. So we were connected to the main office, but we are very far away from the main office. And anytime there were events or parties or free food out, like everybody would forget about us because we were just in our little cave. But she would never forget about us. If she ordered pizza for the office, she would bring us a box of pizza before anybody else got it because she was like, don't forget about them, you know. Sure. That was really sweet. There you go. So yeah. I'm really good at social media, but I'm always looking to get better. So mm -hmm. what what uh what did you what is the key to doing this social media stuff, I say as a pro? Um, I mean, it depends on the type of brand or business that you're promoting, and I think the selling point and what made her universe so successful online was that Ashley engages with the community like yeah you can't just post stuff and leave it there and expect people to go gaga for it and not acknowledge them sure. and the fact that Ashley engages so closely with her community and responds to people and does you know Instagram live and wants to answer people's questions um, and giving people what they want to see is very important mm -hmm. Um you have to acknowledge people online. Otherwise, why are they going to follow you? Like, that's boring. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really important for a lot of brands. And I also work for, like, nonprofits and stuff. So that that has a totally different perspective. But I think what made her universe so, so special was not only the fact that Ashley was the face of the company and people felt a personal connection to her, which is very important, but she also enriched the community and really focused on – people that were following her. Um, like there were a lot of girls she would post about saying, Hey, I, I met this person at a convention today and she's really into Star Trek and she loves fashion and she makes her own clothes. Meet Marissa or whoever. Right. And, and I'd be like, Oh, that girl sounds cool. I'm going to follow her. And then you get to know that person. And now I know hundreds of people, you know, mostly women just because Ashley made those girls feel important and kind of put their story out there on a large platform and connected everybody. Um, so that was a very special part of her universe social media, which I think now has changed more as they shift more into focusing on just the apparel. Mm -hmm. But I think like building that community is super important. Number one for you, Brian, you just Stop actually it. have to post stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I was hoping I was going to get lost in that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. You're doing better. I'm so proud of you, though. I'm You're, trying. like, actually promoting yourself. Uh, it's the worst. I mean, I it, the only thing worse th is getting reprimanded by you when I don't do it. <laughs> so you've beaten I don't me. yell at you that much. No, we're good now. You've beaten me down. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's you, into yeah. a pulp. Into a pulp. That's where I am. I'm just a shell of a promoting man. <laughs> so what? <laughs> so what was it that made you want to like dig your heels into social media and stuff? Because you're kind of the social media queen right now. Um, I, it's so funny. I feel like everybody thinks that, but social media is actually a very small part of what I do now. Sure. Um, I like doing social media, but I think it's become very challenging for small businesses to make it big on social media without investing a lot of money in advertising, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so I, I do quite a bit of social media and I think it's, I think it's fun because I just love being creative. And I think with social media, there are so many ways now that you can be creative. Like you can make fun Instagram stories, you can post videos, you can do a carousel of images that tie together and make one image um, being able to interact with people is very important. And I think customer service is so, so, so important for people to take seriously if they run a business. Um, right. so part of my job is, is really almost being the customer service rep for businesses with social media accounts, you know, for their brands. Uh -huh. And, you know, I'll, I'll post content as well and create their content and, create a strategy for like their upcoming campaigns. But the part that I love the most is making sure that the customers are satisfied. And if they have an issue, resolving their issue and making them feel like they are important and their money was spent on a brand that cares about them. Right. Um, I think there are a lot of brands that don't focus on that. And I don't like supporting brands like that. And I, I know that I personally shop more consistently and more loyally to brands that take customer service very seriously. Yeah. So I try to give that to like the clients that I work with. I try to give that to their customers. And that's the most rewarding part of it is if somebody gets back to you after they had a horrible experience or received the wrong item or their item came broken or they feel like the product is too expensive or whatever, like being able to help them and turn that situation around is very rewarding. It's not just about posting stuff and getting likes and getting shares. It's about like making an impact on someone and and having them feel a connection with that brand. Sure. PR. So, it's all PR, man. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, you're pretty good at it. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, not bad. PR. PR. You, PR. Cause, so... What is it? Odit Creative Solutions? Mm -hmm. that, okay, got it right first try. Look at that. Boom. Wow, Brian. Right. I've only made you a website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The geniuses at, at Odit Creative Solutions. I blast that all the time. I know you do. Things, I know you, know. you do. I'm just teasing I'm you. so good at promoting everyone else. Cause you, you really are. <laughs> <laughs> I made freaking pajamas yesterday, and you're like, look at this. And I'm like, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then there was a follow-up tweet to that. I'm like, see? She's good at everything. Yeah, yeah no. I'm just really excited to have talented friends. Uh, so what what made you want to do your own thing like that? Because you'd, been, you'd done it to an extent beforehand, but then Oda Creative Solutions, why go that route? Here's a very simple answer, Brian. I hate working for other people. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, and that's 100% it. Fair. I hate, um, I I hate people telling me what to do. <laughs> And that is true. something that I experienced in the corporate world was people said I work too quickly. And I was like, that's what ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, I'm being reprimanded for being efficient. Yeah. And, and I would say, Hey, am I doing bad work? Like if this work is not good, let me know. And I'll, I'll be happy to slow down and take my time and be more meticulous to right. give best quality work. I said, am I not giving you high quality work? And they were like, no, you're giving high quality work. You just need to slow down. Why? And that ticked me off. <laughs> did they even give a reason? Um, they did, and I'd rather not discuss that. That's fair. But <laughs> it, it, it just, to me, it made zero sense. Yeah, and I, agree. I felt like if I was giving bad quality work, absolutely, I should slow down. But if I'm not, sure, what's the point? And that makes no it sense. was a situation where I was working so fast that it wasn't like I was getting my project done within the first hour of the day, and then goofing off the rest of the day like I was moving on to the next project you know I was working right you're doing your job um, exactly and that was extremely frustrating and so when I when I started looking for other opportunities I was interviewing 
at pretty big companies. Like I interviewed with Microsoft and I was really thinking about pursuing a job at another big corporate environment. And then I thought, you know what? No, like I'm tired of people holding me back. And there you go. I felt like I didn't learn a whole lot within the year that I was at Hot Topic. And I felt like I wasn't being utilized. I felt like I wasn't growing as much, you know? Sure. Like if I'm working quickly and I've mastered the things that I'm doing, I'm ready to move on and learn the next big thing, you know, and progress. Makes sense. And I wasn't given those opportunities. And the more I talked with friends and family members that worked for corporate environments, they all experienced the same thing. And I was like, well, that's stupid. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so um, I had an opportunity come to me where I could freelance. Um, and it was part time, but it was a really good freelance opportunity. And I took it um, and I loved it. And I was able to be flexible. Um I learned a lot in that position. The people that worked at the company taught me a lot. And I was like, this is great. Like, I love this. Um, so I just continued to do that and take on more clients and actually form a business. Um, and it's it's extremely challenging. And I don't think everybody can do it. I think some people are very well suited for corporate jobs. But mm -hmm. for me, it just was not a good fit. And I think it goes back to the fact that I was homeschooled. Sure. And when I was homeschooled, my mom would let me work at my own pace, which means I worked ahead a lot in certain yeah. subjects and other subjects. You know, I was just working at the pace that I needed to. Um, but some things, if I mastered it quickly, I was moving on to the next lesson, you right. know. Makes sense. And that was great because then I could free up the rest of my day and, and start a blog and start a podcast and teach myself to build websites and stuff because I was already done with my school because I didn't have to sit there and wait for the other kid in class to finish up their work a half hour after I did. Right. So I was always very used to working at my own pace and setting my own pace. Um, and I think people who aren't used to that, they work very well in corporate environments, but it was just not my, uh, place. It frustrated me a lot to be held back. Um, so, yeah, that's why I work for myself now. And it's great. <laughs> that makes sense. That yeah. Makes sense. And I mean, like working for yourself has tons of its own frustrations. And a lot of people don't understand how yep. difficult it is. I mean, you have to motivate yourself. You have to stay motivated. It's tough mm -hmm. to do that. It's tough to teach yourself new things as well. Sure. Um, but I definitely prefer it over working under lots of <laughs> chain of command, you know? Sure. So, yeah. What was the hardest part of starting your own thing? And what was something that happened that you weren't really expecting? Oh my God. Everything was hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's just scary. It's, it's extremely scary. And the tough part is that a lot of the clients that I work with, uh, I work with them on, on very short contracts and they will renew my contracts consistently, but I'm always fearful that something could happen and that will end, you know, especially if I work with large companies, everybody deals with, you know, cutbacks and layoffs and, you know, right. The economy could tank, you know, and, and everybody could say, Hey, you know, we don't need you. But, um, so, so that part is really tough and scary. Um, I'm trying to think of the hardest thing though. Like the one single hardest thing. Is it keeping motivated? It's it's definitely keeping motivated, I think. Yeah. And I'm very good about keeping a routine, but feeling uninspired a lot is a challenge. Yep. Um, so constantly seeking out new information, like the latest trends for Instagram, latest features for social media, the blah, 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 um, is Work. tough. Like, it's tough because I do my day job. I do this work for all these clients. But then at the end of the day, I still have to spend three to four hours researching everything in the industry just to keep up. Sure. Um, so I guess, honestly, I think that would be the hardest part. Um, and I think that goes hand in hand with staying motivated because by that point in the day, I'm tired. My brain is tired and I just want to turn work off. But I still have to spend time learning about how this industry is changing because it's always changing. Yeah, and for it's real but that's what I signed up for so yeah, that's true um but that's the toughest thing and then the second part of your question was about something that I didn't expect is that what you said yep Woo! here yeah, we go yeah you're doing um, it 
Sick. So the biggest thing that I didn't expect was the challenges that would arise with working with licensed clients. Mm -hmm. And I can't speak about this too much, but of course. when working with companies like Disney or Microsoft or CBS, um, all these big companies and the brands that they own, they're very protective of those brands. And Understand it, you know, with the licensees that I work with, they all partially represent these giant brands, right. especially if you have the Star Wars license, the Disney license, the Star Trek license, all those types of things. Um, and dealing with the rules and regulations is extremely difficult when you have a very creative mind and you know as a fan what you want to see and what you want to buy, right. but a lot of those things aren't possible after you learn the reasons behind the scenes and you're like, okay, it makes sense. But it's still difficult to accept that. Right. Um, I don't. That I, still I can't don't like go into it. the detail, but it's <laughs> it's tough, and it, it's interesting though to learn about how these things work behind the scenes, especially as a fan. To know, it, like this was something I even learned at her universe was just learning how the clothes are made and why things cost the way they cost, and oh. you know the fit of clothing. Like I had no idea how much goes into that, and like the amount of prototypes of clothing pieces that are made and how much more it costs to make pockets and pants, you know? Really? So yeah, it's crazy. And like, I learned how much it makes to make a Funko pop and I'm not going to say that out here, <laughs> but it's next to nothing. And yeah. then seeing what they retail for is like, what? Um, oh, yeah. so I learned a lot of things like that. And I think that's been the most difficult part is accepting, um, things that you cannot change mm -hmm. in each of these industries sure. and having to work around roadblocks i think i think that's the easiest way to say it yeah that makes sense it's a good diplomatic yeah. answer yeah. <laughs> and then through all of this you've also still got the dorky mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. whole bloggy type thing which still rocking it. it's i mean blogs have always been a thing but do you feel like there's a resurgence coming i feel like a lot more people are starting <laughs> blogs now I feel like there's a shift. So I think blogging was at its high, I don't know, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And now it's shifted more into influencers who have blogs, but their primary source of content goes on social media and sure. not their blog. That makes sense. Uh, like, for example, when I started uh, my very first blog, like before the Dorky Diva, I posted content on it every single day because I didn't have – Twitter. I didn't have Instagram. That was the only place really where I could put things out. I had a Facebook page as well, but I would just share the blog post to my Facebook page. Right. So it was a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, and now you can share stories on Instagram and um, pictures and all kinds of written content. And uh, I think a lot of people do have blogs still, but the culture has definitely shifted a little bit. Sure. And even I, I don't even post a ton on my blog, first of all, just for the sake of time. And second of all, if I do want to share something, I just put it on social media. Um, but I think blogs, will, I think blogs still very much like have a purpose. Um, but I think with Instagram being so prominent, I think a lot more people are using Instagram for blog type content. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like blog mm -hmm. now is best if you do it like because you want to do it for fun and have like another thing to put out as opposed to uh, like a viable source of income. Right. Yeah. Cool. I think you can still make good money with blogging. It's tough because yeah. it's, it's a grind. so much more saturated now. Yeah. That makes sense. It's I know cool, nothing though. about blogging. Yeah, it's kind of intense. Like if you do want to make money blogging, it's tough to get into. I definitely don't make money blogging. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um so it's good to have uh, multiple avenues. An actual business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. It's kind of mind-blowing. I think a lot of people now make money. If they are bloggers, they're making their money from from sponsor sponsorships that are going on their Instagram. That's right. where the money really. Makes sense. So yeah. I'm sure there are definitely people listening to this that are bloggers or want to get into that kind of stuff or do the kind of stuff that you do. So what sort of advice do you have for those people? Um, I think this kind of goes in like hand in hand with what we just said, but if you want to start blogging, don't do it for the money. And yeah, 
I think that goes with any type of content creation. Like if you want to start a YouTube channel, don't do it for the money. If you want to start a blog, don't do it for the money. If you want to start a podcast, definitely don't do it for the money. For real. Um, <laughs> for real, guys. <laughs> because it's just it's just so much harder to obtain that and you're going to be frustrated and you're going to quit because yep. it's not going to happen very quickly. For sure. Um, making money off of things like that takes a lot of time. Mm-hmm. And a lot of dedication and basically it would be a full-time job for mm-hmm. you to to try and obtain that and even then Sometimes it might not work happen. out exactly yeah yeah and and even if it does work out is it going to be subs- you know, like sustainable are you going to get burnt out like those are things to consider um pro tip you will get burnt out yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> um but i think if you want to start a blog or or anything really do it because you're passionate about something and yeah. i think like you and I get that because you and I are passionate about Star Wars and that's why we have the Dorky Diva show. That's right. why we talk about Star Wars all the time. And for me, um, I used to blog about uh, Star Wars fashion a lot and right. I, I still do not as much as I used to, but I only really talk about Star Wars fashion now if I'm super passionate about something I just got. Right. Like I'm not going to post about every graphic tee that comes out, but if somebody comes out with a really unique uh handcrafted jewelry piece like that might spark my interest and I might talk about it because of that um so definitely do it because you are passionate about something and it'll be easy for you to write about it or post about it or whatever um but blogging is really cool and a lot of my longtime best friends I met through blogging mm-hmm. um and I think that's really neat like I I actually just had I actually hung out with a girl, um, I guess it was a couple months ago now, that I actually met back in, gosh, like 2010, 2011 maybe, 2010, and we met just by having Star Wars blogs, and I remember she wrote a lot about Ahsoka, because that's when the Clone Wars was out, and I wrote a lot about the Clone Wars as well, and she's from Atlanta and we had really lost touch for a long time. We had followed each other on social media, but hadn't actively been chatting. Um, and she was out here interning for Amazon this summer and she was like, Hey, like, let's, let's hang out. And I was like, Oh my gosh, yes. And we met up and it was crazy kind of like reminiscing about how we met and how blogging has changed since then and how much we learned from blogging. Like she's doing coding now. She's a professional, like, online engineer basically making smart huge websites for huge brands and she learned that because she started a blog and taught herself a lot of these things um so it's really cool like how we've you know reconnected after all that time and looked back and was like wow this all started because we were bloggers um so i always highly recommend if you want to start a blog do it because who cares if if you end up not liking it or not being able to keep up with it whatever like just leave it up online or delete it or whatever but um it's it's really cool what it can turn into yeah that's pretty crazy to think about i never thought about that that yeah started with like a random blog you did for fun and now you're the dorky diva pretty good I mean, I totally tell people that what I do today for work is 100% credited to blogging. Like, I learned so many things. I learned coding. I learned social media. I learned so many things from blogging um, way back in the day. Sure. Man. So what what tips would you have for somebody who wants to start their own podcast? Ooh. Yeah. Um put you on the spot I, here i think for me the hardest part about podcasting was like learning how to produce a podcast sure it's it's kind of difficult it's a lot of um work. i think it's gotten a lot easier now but it, it's a lot of work and sometimes it can be expensive yeah um so i would say do a lot of research on you know, recording programs and microphones and like if you're listening to this obviously brian and i can answer a lot of questions yep Um, but do your research because I remember I used to pay like 40 bucks a month for a recording program and now I use one for free. And I was like, Hmm, that would have been nice to know about two years ago. (laughs) Um, me and Dropbox. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Brian. Yeah. Things you got to (laughs) learn. Yeah. But as far as a podcast, um, 
I don't know. I think we have a good time because we have such a good friendship and we have such a great time talking about Star Wars, which is something that we love. But I think we would also have a great time talking about the most random crap in the universe. Like, yeah, that's true. Um, I think in order to have fun with a podcast, I highly recommend having a co-host. Um, it just makes it way more fun to actually talk with someone unless you're going to have regular guests on. Sure. Um, I think doing a podcast solely by yourself could be kind of difficult. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, just learning the technical side of it is the hardest part. Getting to sit down and talk is easy and fun. Um, and learn to love your voice. I still Ooh, hate my voice, same. but it's so hard. Same. Learn, when you hear your own to voice, you're going to hate yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's there's like, no way around that. Like, literally everybody says, wow, I hate my voice when yep. they listen to their voice on a podcast. But Yep been doing this four years still can't stand it you just gotta suck it up and do it yep. or edit it and then never listen to it like i do <laughs> well you still have to edit it that's the problem that's, you have to listen to yeah. it while you edit it that is true that is mm. true i've listened to every show that i've ever recorded once <laughs> while i was editing it yeah. i think i've gotten over my issue with my voice like it's, what, yeah? it's whatever okay yeah, yeah just because like i i enjoy listening to the shows that we've done because i think they're so funny to go back and hear <laughs> I mean, whatever. I've just come to terms that I have a terrible voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. Same, same. So come to terms with that. Maybe it's not even about loving your voice. Just come to terms with the fact that you will absolutely hate your voice That's and the right. way you talk. <laughs> That's right. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. I always tell people, if you're going to start your own podcast, start your own podcast. I think that's the most important <laughs> because there are thousands of Star Wars podcasts out there. So if you want to mm -hmm. make a Star Wars podcast, right on. Welcome. But make it you yeah because you know, that's what makes it different because you star wars news if you want the same article read you can find hundreds <laughs> of star wars podcasts talking about the exact same thing yeah. but it's not you talking about it so bring mm -hmm. yourself to it because mm -hmm. I, I think that's where we kind of found our our area with the dorky diva show because it is yeah. unabashedly us <laughs> you know yeah and i feel like we don't at least I don't feel obligated to talk about every piece of Star Wars news. Like we honestly, no, we rarely talk about Star Wars news. We talk about more general topics and we'll quickly discuss news and our thoughts about it. But we're not out there trying to be the first to report on anything. We're not nope. trying to be the first person to interview anybody. Like nope. if you want to do that, more power to you. But sure. I have way more fun with the way that we podcast together. We just we just sit down and nonsense. ramble and just have a great time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was so funny. Sean said, uh, my husband said last night that he listened to our episode about the Dark Crystal. Did and he? he goes, he goes, that thing was all over the place. And I was like, yeah, Brian doesn't follow show notes. Nope. <laughs> oh, you put it on me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, okay. Life under the bus isn't so bad. Yeah. You put it on me. <laughs> all right. I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't do show notes. That's true. Yeah. I have no notes for this. I don't know what's going to happen. I just Yeah, kinda, I know. I, I don't have notes either for this. I just kind of wing it, you know? That's it's just thing. funny that he, he, it was, that episode totally was all over the place, but we had a genuinely awesome time doing that episode, and it sounded like he had a good time listening to it as well. Cool. So, you broke yeah. me in that episode. <laughs> <laughs> one of the few times that, like, I was crying from laughing so hard. Yeah. yeah that one. You got me real good. If you guys haven't already, check out that <laughs> Dorky Diva show episode about the Dark Crystal because biscuits have a have an overlap, <laughs> and it broke me. Biscuits. Biscuits. My God, that, did, that was good. That was good. That was a fun we time, have fun. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we do have fun. I think that's a, the most important part about podcasting. If you're not having fun, what are you doing? And I think I you and I talked about that a lot because uh, I think it was last year we talked about getting – um, guests on the show to interview them, people that work on like the creative side of Star Wars. Yep. And after a while, I was just like, it's cool to talk to them, but that's not where I have fun. I right. have more fun just us sitting down talking about Star Wars. So um, I kind of just made that a priority, like trying to feel cool and important and talking to creators and all that. It's just to me not fun. So sure. Just not we just do what we want. We just do what we want. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that's yeah. why we're so different. Yeah. And like, don't compare yourself to other people. Yep. I mean, you and I talk about all the time how much we love Sky Talkers. Love Sky Talkers. And I would love to 
be like sky talkers, <laughs> but it's just not going to happen. Like my brain doesn't function the way their brains do. Same. Um, yeah. They break down Star Wars in a way that I could never, ever do. Mm-hmm. And that's totally fine. Like they have their, their own podcast. It's very special and very unique. And we don't need to be like them because we can just listen to their podcast and enjoy it. That's we right. We can do our own thing. That's so, right. If you yeah. want ridiculous ramblings with a, a us. With biscuits. <laughs> with biscuits. <laughs> we can do that. You know. Yeah. And irregular schedules. Yeah. yeah. That's right. You never know when that episode that's is going right. to come out. You never know. We should do just random like throwaways. About, <laughs> I mean, we kind of did that with the, what was it called? The um, uh, Fluff and Stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's kinda... for Patreon, though. Yeah, that was for Patreon. That's true. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's. I mean, whatever. It works. <laughs> Just have fun. That's Just my have piece fun. Of Just have fun. If you have audio issues, you can work through it. That's but okay. As long as you're having a good time, that's what's important. Because then it'll be entertaining for people to listen to. And even if people don't listen, like Brian, I honestly didn't think people listened to the Dorky Diva Show for years. And then we saw these people at Celebration, and I was like, they were all dang liars. it, I need to like pull it together. <laughs> that is true. You were like, man, they, we have like an audience. I was like, no, I we don't. I took it seriously after that. You did. Because I was like... I did not. Oh my gosh, people are actually listening to this. I was just doing it just to have fun. I still just do it. I pretend that nobody is listening all the time, especially for the Dorky Diva show. I'm like, yeah. good lord, if I even think about it for a second, I'll be like, oh, why are you guys here? So funny, though. Could yeah. you imagine? Like, That's the thing I, I fear the most if we ever get on the podcast stage at Celebration is we're going to have to look these people in the eye as we're talking and being idiots. I know. We'll just put a screen up in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just wear sunglasses and totally paint the oh my the god we should shades black you know how funny that would be i've been trying to figure out how to Rather bring than sitting there with her eyes closed. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> question and then just point in a random direction to hope to god it's somebody with their hand up <laughs> hope that someone has their hand up can you imagine if we record oh. any questions all right you and i'm like pointing at the wall <laughs> <laughs> pointing at an empty room yeah <laughs> <laughs> Much more realistic. Oh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Oh my god! What is wrong with you people? I think it's so fun though because you and I are so different. If you we were super so structured different. like I am, I don't think it would be as fun. It'd, be, it'd be very be like robotic. Yeah, it'd be the worst. We ha- we have we have both sides of it because you're so type A prepared this and this, and I'm crazy and weird, so mm-hmm. it kind of works. Yeah, it does work out. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think there's another show out there like us, so that helps. I don't think so either. We're freaking weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> but oh, it's okay. the best. Like, I love it. I love our show. Good. I do, too. I, I do, too. So much fun. Jeez. <laughs> well, this show, we've been talking for over an hour and a half already. I believe it, Brian. (laughs) Can you believe it? I I do believe it. I purposely didn't say that because I know you listen to the show. (laughs) Can you believe that we've been talking for an hour already? Uh, Anytime we talk, it's at least a three-hour minimum. (laughs) Listen, that is true. This is actually light for us. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah, this is short. That you know, that's another thing you that a, I get. You got somewhere to be, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> Never. Uh, I I I think about that sometimes. I try not to because you know I still can't believe anyone actually listens to this show. Mm-hmm. Um, so when anyone's like, "Oh, I listen to your show," I'm like, "You're lying." I, I 100% <laughs> don't believe them. I was like, "You do not." Uh, but but I think about that because I have a I don't take notes right, so I just kind of wing it. Mm-hmm. And I have a format for the show um, that goes every time. So I got to be like, you know, hey, dude, we did it, right? It's cool, right? You know, kind of just check checking the temperature of the water at the end to make sure that the guest had a good time. And it just naturally became like, can you believe we've been talking for over an hour already? You know, it's like a, I don't know, it's like a catchphrase type thing. It's that... like your enjoy your burrito thing. Exactly. It's like the enjoy your burrito thing. So, <laughs> but then I'm also like, I bet people think that's so annoying and they hate me for it. And I'm like. Yeah, me too, Brian. You believe we've been talking for an hour? I know. <laughs> I got Well, now that you've called me out, I got to do something different. <laughs> no, 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 it's My fine. My God, no, nope, the it's format's funny. ruined. I've listened it's to hundred episodes, Brian. No, nope. too late. It's already done. The damage is there. I'm insecure now. You did this. <sighs> now I got to rethink the whole thing. Oh my lord! God. From here on out, it's the only, it's the kind of interesting podcast. Oh my lord! My goodness, look what you the did. kind of repetitive podcast. Oh. Salt in the wound. 
I'm making you a stronger person, Brian. Oh, man. You see, guys, I just emotionally abused this man. Yeah, it's true. You guys are getting a little taste of behind the scenes at the Doki Diva show. <laughs> Suck it up, small fry. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel horrible now. Star Wars. To talk about Star Wars. <laughs> Qui Gon's the best. People are probably like, why is he friends with this girl? She's yeah. horrible. I'm telling you guys, legally obligated. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, before I forget, where can people find you online? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now i got to change everything about myself. You can find me online at The Dorky Diva. My blog is thedorkydiva.com. Uh, if you want to listen to Brian and I be total idiots on The Dorky Diva Show... Uh, you can find our show on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and you can also listen to it on thedorkydiva.com. That was good. That was a good plug. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I've ever been okay, if we're honest. But, <laughs> yeah, so I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> okay, bye, Brian. <laughs> Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows... You can now do that at patreon.com slash Jedi Brian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, and JC. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well. <laughs>